Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for May 3rd, 2024. Well, yesterday, not much happened in the market. We were we were bullish, but we were uh, very low volume and just a lot of uncertainty. And then Apple earnings came out, and everyone is now celebrating iPhone sales were off by 10%, but no worries. The company coming out with a record stock buyback of $110 billion, keeping that stock flying high this morning. So what does that mean for today? Well, let's take a look at what happened overnight. First off, we had Asian markets were mixed last night. Um, Hong Kong was the leader by far that's the tech sector um, heavy sector moving to the upside uh, pretty substantially up one and a half percent just short of one and a half percent australia was also up but the other indexes were lower if we take a look at european markets this morning they're green across the board looking pretty good um, showing some bullishness all the way across the board if we take a look at u.s markets well we're soaring uh, because you know when apple goes up and all the other big tech giants go up as well it pulls everything up and so dow futures right now are expected to gap up by over 300 points as we wait for the monthly jobless numbers or job numbers so right now extreme bullishness um, here in the market if we take a look at um, oil this morning, oil is also just a little tiny bit higher. Oil's up 11 cents a barrel at 79.06 a barrel, and Brent is up 18 cents at 83.85 a barrel. Quite a nice change here in that, helping out uh, consumers here quite a bit by lowering that price. Now, if we take a look at our precious metals, well, precious metals right now kind of flat. Gold is down a dollar. Silver is down uh, just a little tiny bit. But copper, platinum, and palladium are all looking just a little bit higher this morning. And then if we take a look at crypto, crypto also lower this morning with Bitcoin down $293 a coin. It had a pretty good bounce yesterday uh, back up. Um, but obviously, um, everyone is still a little bit concerned here being under 60,000 on Bitcoin and, and still showing some selling pressure. Just ticked down $300 a coin. Um, so what does all of that? Well, wait a second. We need to look at uh, current bond yields. And I don't know if it's just enthusiasm in the market right now that's moving this down or with what we talked about yesterday, if Janet Yellen's uh, treasury buyback is having an impact here. But the two-year bonds have fallen to 4.88%. That's considerably lower than the 502 that we were looking at just a day ago. And the 10-year bonds, 4.56, and the 30-year at 4.71. So considerable pullback, but they really haven't moved a whole lot overnight um, waiting on the uh, jobs number here this morning. So what does all that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts, try to remove our bias. Let's take a look at them for what they are, not for what we want them to be, and see if we can decide how we might want to approach the market for today. Well, if we take a look at what we've got going here right now in the diamonds, this is bullish. We've got a hold of this price support and a nice push through this downtrend now the questions that we still have if we can push on higher is can we start breaking through these major 
uh, price levels here in the chart, price resistance levels in the chart. We'll have to wait and see if we can because we're also, as we start pushing up through here, we're also going to run in to that moving average resistance here in the chart. Now, maybe Apple has the power to move the entire market up and just slice through that like it wasn't even there. But we'll see, um, there is a significant amount of price resistance and technical resistance here in the chart. And you can see, trying to pop up here this morning, uh, being up 320 points in the pre-market here, we'll have to see if we can get through that resistance area. This is kind of that W type formation with kind of a retest on the, on the uh, right side over there. But you can see if we can pass through this center up here and then hold a higher low up here, then I would say we have that opportunity. We could start moving back up here in the market. Remember, this is pretty much fueled by one company at the moment. So if we were to whipsaw, we we shouldn't be too terribly surprised by that. If we come back down, I'm going to be looking for a little bit of price support right in here um, on that um, little high right here. If that does not hold, then it wouldn't be um, all that much of a surprise for us to come back down test the top side of that big black candle. Beyond that point, we're probably coming on down to this little level of price support right in here to test that area of the chart if the bears get going. So keep a close eye on that. And, and again, don't be too surprised if we whipsaw unless um, um, we get a really good jobs uh, number here this morning, that employment situation number. If it's really good for the market, perhaps um, we will follow through and have a really strong Friday to the upside. If we take a look at our SPY, SPY, very similar situation here. As we push back up, we're in this wedging pattern here in the chart, and we're getting a nice pop here in the SPY this morning. But you will want to note, at least at the moment, we're still underneath this downtrend. So if we can push through here, once again, we need to see if we can break through the top of that big black candle in here. And if we can, then we're gonna push up in here and we're gonna test this price action resistance in the chart and try to break that downtrend here to see if we can break through up into there. Now breaking through that area, well, as you can see, we still have all of this congestion here in the chart. So anywhere in the middle of this, we could find some price resistance. For example, maybe right there in the middle, find a little price resistance before rallying up here to this substantial price resistance level of the chart. Now you will wanna keep in mind as we push up there, we're gonna be running right into that technical resistance as well with that 50 day moving average. So watch that carefully in here, this wedging pattern. Remember, it's about 50% chance to the upside, 50% chance to the downside. And um, we have to watch for that potential whipsaw with such a big gap. We've seen so much of that lately. Can we actually follow through with this gap? Is there actually going to be some serious buying um, other than this um, um, pre-market hype that we've been seeing and then just turn around and sell it right back off? We'll wanna watch carefully for that. Let's take a look at um, our QQQ. Now our NASDAQ, our NASDAQ looking uh, pretty darn good here as well. Had a good day yesterday and I'm going to give this the benefit of the doubt, although we did push down below that upside trend. Yesterday we recovered that with a nice push to the upside. So I'm going to give that the benefit of the doubt. And as you can see with a big push here this morning, we might be trying to break through up here into this area of the chart. There's a little bit of price resistance right up in here that we'll want to be watching. If we can push through that, then I'm going to suggest we come up here and we test this recent high pushing up into that area. Now getting through there, we run into a very significant level of price action resistance and of course downtrend 
that we're going to have to be dealing with in the chart. And at the same time, we're going to have to deal with that 50 day moving average up here that could put a lid on uh, the QQQ. We do want to remember that we are in May and that we're going to start slipping into this summertime trade, which typically is lighter. Now, sometimes um, everything is great and there's no problems at all with it, but sometimes there is a problem with it. So watch that carefully as we push up toward that 50 day. And again, watch for whipsaws. If we take a look at our IWM, IWM had a really good um, push up here and I'm going to continue to say this is the most bullish right now of the indexes because you'll notice we have held this little upside trend all the way through and we broke that downtrend here overall. So pushing up next level is going to be right up here. Can we break through that area of the chart? If we can, we're probably going to be looking at some area right through here for that next, I didn't draw that very straight, but the next upside resistance may be up into there. And then of course, we start progressing through these levels to push back up and maybe test this very, very strong price resistance level on the chart. Um, now, keeping in mind that if we are taking a look at all of our other moving averages, as we push up through this resistance area in the chart, we're going to be running face to face with that 50 day moving average, see whether or not we have enough energy to push on through to the upside. Let's take a look at our uh, VIX here in the market. Our VIX uh, started up yesterday with that another whipsaw. We were seeing a lot of these whipsaws um, in the morning. So watch that carefully, uh, pushing back uh, down by the end of the day. And we came right down here, came to rest on this price support and this trend. So now the question is, can Apple supply enough energy in the market that we can say, nope, we've got no fear anymore in the market. And we start uh, dropping this below that trend and we start pushing down here toward this 13 and a half handle level in the chart. Certainly does seem likely this morning that that's possible. If the bears, however, find something in the jobs data to react to, then that possibility of us bouncing off of there would not be a surprise either um, to potentially push up off of this little double level of price support. So keep a close eye on that. I think anything is possible. I will say that Fridays have tended to be much more on the bullish side here um, recently. We've had some bad Fridays for sure, but uh, we seem to have a pretty good uh, track record where Friday is a buy, buy, buy uh, type day. So watch carefully for the possibility that um, those bulls will really try hard. They've been chomping at the bit. They just can't wait to buy. And they've been chomping at the bit to do it. And I think Apple may give them the um, opportunity to do just that. If we take a look at our um, T20s, T2122 made a nice pop here yesterday, a nice push to the upside on that relief, particularly in the afternoon after that whipsaw had occurred. But watch this carefully with this big gap up this morning. There is a very good chance um, this morning that we could be right up here in the bearish reversal zone first thing in the morning. That's where we could see that whipsaw. So watch that carefully, that big push up here in the pre-market pop. So um, I would expect us to be up here pretty high unless we get some kind of major reversal in the economic data. We want to keep in mind that we have opened a pretty good downside uh, push if for some reason we happen to be disappointed uh, by something today. So watch carefully for that as well. If we take a look at our T2108, the percentage of stocks above the 40 day moving average, we had a good day yesterday pushing up, but it wasn't super impressive. And this is one of those things that we had that was a problem is that although we were pushing to the upside, we just weren't getting a whole lot of enthusiasm, I should say, to push on through um, the momentum 
was lacking yesterday, and I'll show you in um, um, the the breadth of the market why that was the case. But pushing back up here, we're retesting this resistance. Now this morning, we're going to get if that's gap up holds. We're going to get this big pop and we're going to push right on up here. I would not be surprised to see that we're up here testing 50% of the stocks and maybe even more back above their 40 day moving average, um, all on the back of Apple. So, kind of keep an eye on that this morning. Pretty darn bullish. Now, if the bears were to find some reason to attack, then retests of these supports um, also look like a possibility. Um, on the day if we take a look at t2107 here again bulls had a nice little pop yesterday but it wasn't all that impressive again we were still showing uh, that uncertainty in the market that lack of enthusiasm and we um still are having to deal with a little bit of price resistance here in the chart now keeping in mind we have held this, um, the percentage of stocks above the 200 nicely. We've held it up well. We've tested this 50% area a couple of times, but really haven't been able to um, break that down in here. So I would say uh, the bulls are definitely in control here on this and that possibility with the big pop this morning that we will break these areas and we'll start coming up here and testing these next levels in the chart. And just remembering that once we get up into here, you can see that gets to be pretty frothy and oftentimes we cannot hold that um, those high prints, something above 65 in here on T2107. If we take a look at our T2101, T2101 is that absolute breadth and you can see that problem that we had yesterday. Although we were moving to the upside, the breadth was quite low. Now, one thing that can help this is these companies coming out of their blackout period. And, and just think about $110 billion in buybacks just on Apple alone. Um, all of these buybacks that have been announced are certainly going to add to the breadth of the market pretty substantially. And what we've really become is a market that can't really survive without the companies buying back their own stock. And I would expect that at some point in time, we could start to see that breadth improving here to the upside, just with all the stock buybacks that they're doing uh, in the market. So watch carefully for that possibility, but um, it'll be important today on this big pop this morning, will we actually see breadth moving to the upside, helping out those bulls, showing that we're actually feeling that enthusiasm on the breadth side, on the buying here in the market, or will we continue to see us pull back in breadth, which won't be that good a signal for the upside move. So keep a close eye on that. Let's take a look at our, whoops, let's take a look at our economic calendar here for today. And our um, economic calendar, well, we've got a few things to be paying attention to, as I suggested. We're gonna be looking right here for um, our employment situation number. So keep a close eye on that. Now, employment situation is looking for a little bit of decline over last time, but still a relatively hot print. Uh, 243,000 uh, uh, is what they're looking for. They're looking for unemployment to stay flat. They're looking for private payrolls to fall. Now remember, um, our ADP came in hot, so it's possible that these numbers could come in hot and that could inspire the bear. So just again, watch for the whipsaw um, possibility. Manufacturing payrolls, they're looking at that increasing by 7,000. Since we've seen some of that um, uh, uh, data in the PMI and data in the uh, manufacturing sectors not being so great, we want to watch that one as well. Participation rate staying flat at 62.7, looking for average hourly er, um, earnings to uh, be flat at 0.3 and a one-tenth decline on the year over year. And 
average work week at 34.4 so watch carefully there after that we've got a pmi composite the composite's looking for a 50.9 again right there around stall speed on our pmi just a tiny little bit of growth showing in both uh, manufacturing and services so watch that carefully and the ism number ism they're looking for that to increase to 52.0 from 51.4 now, if we take a look at the rest of the day, Baker Hughes in here, and then we're going to have Fed speakers um, well after the bell, so that shouldn't affect us today. But just gear up for the possibility that there's going to be a lot of Fed speak next week because they are out of their blackout period. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at our um, earnings calendar here for today. And there's not too many on that earnings calendar, so I'm just going to run through them here this morning. We've got um, ADNT on the notable list, AXL, BEP, CBOE, CBRE, GTLS, LNG, CRBG, ESNT, FLR, GPRE, HSY, IMO, KOP, NMRK, O. Oops, O-M-I. One of these days I'll learn how to type, y'all. Um, maybe. <laughs> P-A-A. -A, um, P-R-L-B. T-R-M-B. U-N-I-T. And X-P-O. So those are the notables for today to be paying attention to. They are all pre-market reports. There are no notables for the afternoon today. So we've gotten through the bulk of earnings here um, on S&P 500. So um, now we'll see if we can continue to maintain that inspiration um, um, as we move forward here in the earnings season. Let's take um, a quick look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, everyone, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that favor, click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue to grow. You know, it's the algorithm anymore. Um, it's the engagement with the video that makes probably the most, um, uh, the biggest response to the algorithm and helps uh, the YouTube algorithm say, oh, people are liking this and so they'll show it to more folks. So thank you everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly appreciate it. Um, the channel continues to grow and um, you guys are awesome. So thank you so much. Also, just a big shout out to everyone who just takes that video link and shares it on your social media feed, uh, post it on your Facebook or, or whatever, post it in your Facebook groups. That helps an awful lot as well. So thank you everyone who does do that. I truly, truly appreciate it. Now, let's take a look at um, these stocks that could be setting up. And remember everyone, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You need to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful in this market. And remember that, um, you know, anything is possible. Um, I, I do think we've seen over and over and over, we've seen a lot of whipsaws in the market. So I would suspect that there's the possibility that we can see some, um, some more pretty big um, whipsaws. As a matter of fact, Dow futures have already come down um, to 283. So we're kind of getting a little bit of a tiny whip even in the futures uh, this morning as these earnings roll out. So keep that in mind. So looking at these charts, um, remember 
that um, this is not a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Do your own due diligence. Make sure you're following your trading rules. And if you don't know what your trading rules are, there's no time like the present to get those trading rules in place. Because I can tell you, I did a class yesterday for the members of Right Way Options, and I can tell you that my success in trading really has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with the fact that I have a trading plan and I follow my trading plan and a set of rules that I've learned over the years helps me protect me, my, or helps me protect my account from me and actually helps me make money in the market. There's no accident when people are successful in the market. It's because they are well prepared and well planned. If you need some help with that, we'd love to have you come over and check us out in Hit and Run Candlesticks on Right Way Options. We'd love to help you with that, and I would truly, truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at some of these stocks. Um, first off, take a look at Alcoa. Alcoa um, started to slip here um, and break that support, and check that out. Yesterday we got this big reversal back up, pushing back up into this um, consolidation zone here in Alcoa. And that possibility, this W formation that we're starting to see develop here, or you might look at this as more of a cup and handle. Here's our cup, here's our handle, and that possibility that after we finish this range bound chop in here, that we can push on through. So if the bulls are gonna be pushing in here, I would keep an eye on things like um, Alcoa. That's looking pretty good right there um, overall. And if we take a look at um, some of the um, other areas of the market that are looking pretty good, keep an eye on that RTX. RTX continuing to hold strong in there. We're coming out toward this longer term trend in this consolidating period in here and we're not giving up here at all in RTX. I would watch for that opportunity. That could push on through and kind of keeping in mind, we've got a big resistance up in here, but if we push through there, it's all time highs in RTX. And I'm gonna to continue to mention um, Lockheed Martin. Lockheed looking pretty good in here as well, holding in this consolidating range in that bullish pattern trying to push on higher here in the chart. Um, let's take a look at um, EX, Expedia. Um, Expedia, let's go to the, Expedia had um, a, just an, an absolutely beautiful upside potential setting up yesterday. And this is one of those um, examples of why you don't want to be gambling on earnings. The setup in here was absolutely beautiful. It was perfect in here uh, for a potential upside with a higher low, nice little resting pattern, and then those earnings come back out and they just get slammed to the downside. So be really careful. You know, when we trade earnings, we have to admit that all we're doing is we're gambling on a coin flip whether that's going to be um, a good coin flip or a bad coin flip. And I don't know about you, but I work really hard for my money and I don't like to gamble it on a 50-50 chance like that with the big emotion that we see in the market. So think about those carefully. Stocks that have been missing this quarter have been heavily punished and um, I wouldn't wanna be risking a lot of money on anything like that holding into that um, unknown event of earnings. Now, when we take a look at other stocks that are looking really beautiful, take a look at a GE. Beautiful little resting pullback to find support in here. GE looks like there's an opportunity. This could push on through to the upside. I would watch that one carefully. Um, GM is another that's looking pretty darn good here. You can see if I were to draw a trend right up along here, we're consolidating against this resistance in that opportunity that GM could push right on through and break on higher here in this chart. Looks like a pretty decent possibility. So I'd keep an eye on General Motors. Um, Qualcomm had a big pop on earnings and now breaking through this resistance up here, any rest or pullback that holds the higher low. We need that rest and consolidation here to give us a low risk entry. Follow along that trend 
look for those kind of opportunities in those charts. Take a look at American Express. American Express is looking really, really good here. Even though we're seeing Visa, MasterCard, um, even Block um, had kind of a rough day. Um, SQ yesterday. Um, well, it ended up reversing to the upside. Um, when I was looking at it earlier in the um, in the earnings, it was moving lower, so reversing to the upside, trying to hold in here. But keeping an eye on that AXP, it's one of the strongest right now of the pay systems, looking pretty good. Finding that price support right in here, I would look for that next opportunity potentially for that to move to the upside. So watch those areas closely. Now, um, take um, continue to uh, keep an eye on some of these tech sector stocks that may be trying to move back up today. Um, AMD trying to bounce back up here just a little bit, but I would watch this carefully. I think there is the possibility that any rally back in some of these could find some additional selling. Just um, imagine if AMD were to fall off of this little shelf right here, we could look for some pretty big point moves to the downside. And still, this is well under its 50 day moving average. And I think the target down here is now the 200 day. So watch that carefully. There may be some more. Any rally back could set up an entry short for those moves back to the downside. Take a look at um, eBay eBay had a pretty rough day um, after its earnings, as you can see, uh, falling below some support in here. So now any rally back um, could set up those um, resistance areas in the chart that we might find that failure pattern and be looking to establish some of those downtrends. Now, I know that's not popular to talk about, and particularly when we're seeing, um, you know, big tech and uh, anything tech is nothing but bullishness. But if you've taken a look at some of the um, uh, chart price action in here, we're running into some trouble and a little bit of concern here in some of these charts. So watch that carefully, SMH rallying back up into price resistance if you'll notice right here uh, oh come on there we go uh oh sorry about that i had to restart my tc2000 i had some kind of a little glitch there so you'll want to notice right here that um we have a potential failure at the 50-day moving average so watch that carefully here in some of these tech sector stocks where we are seeing a little bit of weakness and I think what we're doing is we're actually seeing some rotation into some of the more defensive areas of the market. Take a look at Colgate Palm Olive just continuing to rip to the upside. We looked at Hershey here this morning um, on its earnings report trying to pop through this resistance um, in the bottom. Any rest or pullback sets up an opportunity. Tyson, defensive sector stock, very bullish, um, setting setting up for more upside potential here in Tyson. Um, Hormel also um, broke through some resistance, had a rough day yesterday, but still in this higher low possibility and potentially setting up to the upside. So we're seeing a lot of these defensive sector stocks, Coke, uh, KHC, had a rough day on its earnings falling down, um, may um, may not be able to recover from that and start moving into more of a downtrend. But if we take a look at PepsiCo, PepsiCo still holding up in a pretty good pattern here, trying to break some resistance and showing that bullishness. So we really are seeing quite a few of the defensive sector stocks showing bullishness. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're seeing the Russell improve the way it is. I think we're seeing that rotation out of some of the big techs and moving into diversifying those funds because everyone's starting to think about the summer and the possibility that we could have lackluster performance in the market. 
this summer and they're looking at picking up some dividend yields and i think that's also why we're seeing such a huge response in utilities utilities just really looking good here moving to the upside after breaking this major downtrend good strong dividend payers in here and um, they are showing lots of signs of strength and signs of buying so with that everyone hey i want to wish you all a fantastic day thank you so much for being here i do truly appreciate it hope you had a great week hope you have some great profits today and more importantly a wonderful weekend with your family remember the market will be here no matter what happens today um, and we'll be back bright and early monday morning wish you all the best take care be safe see you